Breaking news now, a 15-year-old is charged with murdering his aunt and trying to kill his mother. Matthew Torres is in Antioch this morning with more. So, Matthew, what exactly happened? Well, Metro Police saying that there was some sort of argument between the suspect and his aunt that really continued yesterday morning. Now, compared to our last live shot, as you can see behind me, we have gotten closer to the house where this all took place. The crime scene tape is now down. And what's eerie about this, you see the slide, you see a bicycle. What is supposed to be a home sweet home has now turned into a scene of a murder investigation. Now, as far as the details of what they were arguing about, that is still unknown, but this morning neighbors are waking up to know Michelle Bergman, known to neighbors as Shelly, is dead and that her nephew, 15-year-old Matthew Bergman, is the suspected killer. Her exact cause of death is still under investigation, but we do know Michelle was killed around 9 yesterday morning. It wasn't about almost 11 hours later when Matthew's mom went to check up on her. That's when police say he stabbed her in the neck. She escaped to her neighbors who called for help. And this morning, the investigation continues, but we're learning that Matthew really went on with his day as if nothing happened. After killing his aunt, it looks like he probably cleaned the scene. And then until his mother got home at 5 o'clock, actually cared for two small children who were in the residence. Those children are a two-month, excuse me, two-year-old and a six-month-old kids that the aunt was supposed to adopt. So this morning, as you can see, the scene has cleared out here already. All of them live together. As far as the mom, she is going to be okay. In fact, we watched her and the grandmother, who was also staying here at the time, leave. But of course, just knowing the circumstances, chose not to talk. Reporting live in Antioch, Matthew Torres, News Channel 5. Matthew, thanks a lot for the update there. Also some breaking news this morning. A man rushed to the hospital. He was brutally beaten and slashed in the head with box cutters, the kind that carpenters use. The victim showed up at a gas station on Main Street over in East Nashville about four hours ago at 3 o'clock this morning. Police tell us the guy was attacked at a nearby homeless camp. No word how serious the injuries are. It sounds painful, though, doesn't it? Box cutters? Yikes. No suspects in custody right now. Investigators are looking into a deadly wreck in Sumner County where a vehicle hit an elderly couple who was out walking. Police in Portland tell us a 77-year-old man died at the scene on Rock Bridge Road early last night. His wife was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. We're told the position of the sun and the width of the road may have both been contributing factors. We're told the 18-year-old driver has not been arrested or cited yet. We're following some breaking news from overseas. Now, a couple of people have been arrested in connection with a deadly attack on a French police officer. Investigators tell us the suspects are connected to La Rosie Avala. Avala is accused of stabbing a police captain and his wife to death in their home outside of Paris and then taking the couple's three year old son as a hostage. Even more disturbing, Alvala apparently broadcast the whole attack on Facebook Live. Wow. He was killed when a SWAT team moved in. The little boy was rescued unharmed. Abala has been convicted on terror charges in the past back in 2013. Hmm. President Obama will travel to Orlando to pay his respects to the victims of the mass shooting at the Pulse nightclub. Yeah, the president has called the act terrorism and hate. The FBI says the shooter Omar Mateen expressed support of several radical groups, but they believe he really acted alone. Now locals are reported seeing Mateen in that same Pulse nightclub several times before. One regular says he would drink alone and become belligerent and angry. Several have also reported that he would use online dating sites to meet up with gay men in the past. Well, among the 49 killed in the attack, by Mateen was a mid-state man, Omar Capo. He graduated from Laverne High School just last year, then moved to Orlando to study to be an actor and a dancer. Those who knew him described him as bubbly, always happy, and someone that can make you smile. A vigil was held in his honor at the high school last night as friends remember someone that they said could just light up a room. We call each other mi amor, mi vida, mi cariño, mi corazón, just a show of endearment. And our thing, every time we saw each other, we just yell those things out of each other, at each other. That was just, that was like our, our thing. 
Omar's family is in Orlando right now. We're told Omar will be buried down in Orlando. And the Orlando shooting has many here in Nashville, from police to city leaders and business owners thinking about safety. Metro police are making plans now to step up security for the upcoming Nashville Pride Festival. The police department says it will have a visible presence at the event and extra officers will be on hand as well. This will be in addition to the security provided by, by a private company. Metro Police Chief Steve Anderson and Mayor Megan Berry both say they are committed to making sure that everyone is safe. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes when we are thinking about security for Nashville. And I think what you will see going forward right now is just a more visible presence of our police officers so that people can feel safe. This is just the reality of the world that we live in. And uh, we should all prepare, we should all be vigilant, but uh, we should all go on with our lives. The Nashville Pride Festival and concert will be June 24th and 25th. Organizers say they are expecting in light of what happened in Orlando, a record crowd to attend.